Paul Crilly, um, the general manager for Spicer's Paper in the Pacific Northwest. I uh, run the Seattle and uh, Portland divisions. Well, Paul, what have you enjoyed most about working in the paper industry? Um, so I'm a legacy paper industry guy. My dad was in the business, you know, his, my entire life, his entire career. Uh, so it's kind of all I've ever known. Um, and I really love it. It's, I've loved it since I was a kid. My first job was in a sample department, you know, uh, for Butler paper. So, um, really it's just all of the people that I've met through the industry from the time I was a young kid, you know, a lot of the people that I remember uh, meeting through my dad are still friends of the family. Uh, we still see them all the time. And then subsequently their children are in the business. I'm in the business. So it's really just the relationships. Um, and, and it's an exciting industry. I know that sounds a little odd. You know, I've got two kids that are in their twenties and they have a hard time believing it, but uh, it really is. It's an exciting business. There's a lot to it. Um, keeps me on my toes every day. What continues to inspire you in your own career? So for me, it's the constant change in the business. Um, we hear so much about the paper industry and the forestry industries on a steady decline. Um, but what I see from my perspective is the constant innovation, uh, the constant change of focus to, you know, now it's sustainability, it's, uh, you know, making sure that we're being a good steward of the environment um, and, and transitioning into the wide format segments and, you know, all of the other things that comprise the business that we're in. It's not just, you know, sheet fed, 40 inch work and web work anymore. It's, it's such a wide variety and it's so exciting and you get into the inkjet. So um, that really inspires me on a daily basis. It, it forces me to learn. It forces me to, you know, read a lot, which is great because <laughs> I'm not a huge reader, but I'm learning to be. So that's, it's really important, but um, yeah, that, that is inspiration. And then, you know, my family. So, you know, following up on the, on what my father did and making sure that, you know, the people that I meet um, feel good when they have an interaction with me and, you know, know that I'm in it for the right reasons and that uh, the people that work for me know that, you know, I've got their best interest at heart. Those are the things that are, that are inspiring to me. Since you're part of the Emerging Leaders Group, how has your involvement with the Emerging Leaders positioned you for success in your current role with Spicers? So for me, I've transitioned within the last two years from a sales role to a management role. Um, so obviously with that, there's a lot to learn. Um, and I've got a lot of wonderful mentors that I've had for years in the business. And then obviously uh, working for Jan, she's an incredible mentor and an incredible resource, right? So, um, but then to get outside of your typical, let's say echo chamber, I know that's a popular term these days, and to meet people in different aspects of the business that have different responsibilities, that work in different regions of the country, that maybe have responsibility overseas, and just to hear all of the different challenges that they face, how they um, how they interact with others, and how they, you know, attack those different challenges, the resources that they use, um, and just to have those people as a resource, people that. Otherwise, I probably would not have had an opportunity to meet. Um, so to go through this emerging leaders group is, has been really special. It's been, um, you know, I knew that it would be good for me, uh, but it's exceeded my expectations. It's been fantastic. So I'm really thankful that I was asked to join it. And I'm really thankful that I did it. So Paul, can you speak to something new that you've learned about the industry that has changed the way you approach your day to day? So, you know, I think in the previous question, I, I started to answer it a little bit. So my change in roles has kind of pulled the, the cover back on the entire business for me. So being in an outside sales role for 20 years, like I was, you get so focused, you know, on one part of the business, which is a huge part of the business. It's what we do, but there's so much more to it. And so, um, you know, I've just learned every day all different aspects of the business. And so getting an opportunity to get involved in the financial end and to get involved in the operations of the business and the purchasing and just all that goes into that, um, you know, those things are constantly 
setting me up for success uh, moving forward. And, and so I hope that I'm taking good notes and I'm paying, paying attention and asking the right questions. Uh, and so every day for me has been a learning experience these last two years. So um, that all of that is helping me uh, move forward in my career. And my last question for you, Paul, is how can merchants and other industry professionals continue to stay motivated in a hybrid or remote work environment? So that's very challenging, obviously. We've been doing it now for almost two years, and I have to say that it's been incredible to see that transformation and to see how everyone has just jumped in to do the best that they can with the resources that we've got and that we have to use Zoom right here that, that we're using for this interview. Um, I think moving forward, it's important, um, and this is something that Jan promotes heavily with all of our her managers is communication, personal communication, not necessarily just talking about business and connecting in that way, but connecting on a more personal level and making sure that, that we're making you know, making everyone feel like we're concerned, not to feel that we're concerned, letting them know that we actually are concerned about their mental health and their well-being. Um, I think that helps to get on to the next day and face all of those challenges when you know you're with a group of people that that truly do care about you, um, you know, and, and are going to work with you through this. The other part of it is, and I've done this and I know, you know, all the folks that work with me and for me have done this is take the opportunity to learn. Um, when you're working remotely, you have a little bit more downtime than you might otherwise not being in an office, use that, that time constructively and, you know, take a class or read a book or, you know, just, um, you know, jump online and, and get the RISI report and read that daily. Just anything that you don't normally do, do those things. And, and that'll help to motivate you. You'll learn more about the business that you're in and, uh, hopefully that will inspire you. And then the last thing I would say is, take your vacations. And when you do, totally disconnect. Take those days or a week or whatever that is and give yourself and your mind and your body that time to regenerate, and to, to come back, you know, refreshed, truly refreshed and, and ready to get back to work because the way we've been doing it for the last, you know, two years has not been easy. It's been tough on everyone. And so I think more than ever, it's important that we, that we disconnect a little bit and spend time with our families and friends and, and, you know, really get away from work for a little bit. Mm -hmm.